Hello, fellow Minecrafters. Gearsaw Studios here. Today, I'm going to show you how to build a blacksmith. Because when you want to get netherite gear, you better do it in style. So, before I begin, remember, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. So, with that, on to the tutorial. For this build's palette, we can divide it up into two parts. One for the outside, just some nice ground texturing. So we're going to be using andesite and tuff for that, just some nice ground texturing, that is all. And for the actual building, we're going to be using cobbled deep slate, polished deep slate, polished andesite, along with acacia and dark oak woods, where acacia will act as the floor and dark oak will be accents for things like tables. Then find a decently sized area, about 15 by 15. And it's going to be pretty box-like because there's going to be a 90 degree bend at the building itself. So that way there's just a good area for the outside. So once you find that area, get your materials ready. With this area selected for the build, we are going to start by creating a simple frame for it. So I'm going to be using polished deep slate and it should be seven blocks because it's going to be an outer frame. So remove the inner part. Then what you want to do is start creating an area for an inner wall for it, which then with some modifications can be turned into just a normal wall. So kind of like this. And the floor can be acacia. So with these general guidelines set out, you want to go up a couple of blocks and where the andesite should go over, you can just use some polished deep site, although you might want some just for simplicity purposes inside the build. And we want this thing to be two fours. So repeat what we have going on here. And now you have a pretty decent amount of the build done. So before I continue any further, I had to make some changes to our design we have here. I introduced waxed copper into the palette. You can switch it for oxidized waxed copper. Note, waxing it isn't 100% necessary. And we can see, well, it's just a little bit better looking. So instead of having it on the corners, you have it where the sides like meet up into a corner. So this cobbled deep space where it originally was, if you split it off into two separate ones, it looks a lot better. So extend this for about three segments and create a corner piece. And then once you have a corner piece, like on a right around here, then turn and make it symmetrical. Then we have this nice yard thing in the middle. So that way we can have an outdoor section. By following those simple build rules, I have completed a lot of the structure. And one thing to note is what to do with a corner. So, it might be a little difficult because they won't necessarily perfectly line up. So, what I did is just added accents, used stairs on them, and then had a middle column with its own accents, sort of like this. So, pause to analyze if you want to, you know, copy the design. And, once you have that done, finish the rest of the build's basics. So, of course, you need a second floor. Don't worry on a way to get up for now. Don't forget the normal floor and the walls. For the windows, just use normal glass. So the frame and exterior are done. And you can see I've done a lot of details. The stairs on the bottom, the extra blocks here and there. And this all contributes to a good armored feel, which works well with the blacksmith. So this part is going to be like a storage unit or a shop. And the exterior is where we're going to have the actual fun part. So one thing we have to account for later on is one of these windows is going to have to be replaced by a chimney. So in the scenario you have not finished that, then reserve one wall for just a chimney. So I'm going to just reserve this wall. So I'm going to punch out two blocks to differentiate it. Now what we want to do is build the roof. So Starting from this block right here on the exterior frame, we can place two slabs, then place a stair, 
backward stair, another block on top of that, and keep going up until you reach the middle. And, of course, Java Edition having invisible blocks, which can be remedied by F3 plus A, and we are at the top now. So you might want to swap these blocks positions in order to make it a little bit taller, but that's the general idea. Make it meet in the middle, and you can connect them across like this, which is why you should probably have a slab on top, even if you aren't going to replace the block below it with the roof block. So once we have that, get the rest of the frame in and connect it to this part right here on the other side. So we have a roof frame here, and now we have a decision whether to make it out of cobbled deep slate or dark oak planks. I'm going to do cobbled deep slate, and don't be surprised if that changes in the next clip. But basically, on the blocks that are full, connect them up on each side using full blocks. And if they're stairs, connect them up using stairs. So it's relatively simple to build a tall roof. And as you go on, you might decide to change various dimensions, such as this instead just being changed a little, where we have a full block here, and just small things that are hard to explain, but just look better. So progressively connect them, and see what works best for you. I have found the correct block to use for the roof, and I highly recommend using it too. Deep slate tiles. Typically, I only use them for fours, but they work very well as shingles. And for the back, you can just have this little design right here where you have the corner and two blocks adjacent. So for a total of three blocks, replace the stairs above it, go one block inward and do the same thing to get a nice result for the back. And we have a very nice blacksmith exterior. The only thing to do now is to work on this part. And... What we need to do is kind of just make a, a little bit of a wall. I'm not entirely sure what to do with these despite me practicing building quite a bit. So you kind of just do whatever. You can add some deep slate tiles like this. You can just ignore it and just have some filler thing here. So kind of like this. And that's a nice way to just eliminate it from the build. It looks pretty nice. So don't focus too much on this. but Remember to put a decent amount of effort into it. So, now that we have these little walls in, we have the exterior done. So, we should focus on the actual functionality of the exterior. So, of course, we need our furnace, which isn't even functional. So, this part we dedicated for the furnace, we should start filling it up and Placing down some campfires will be good, because that will create a nice smoke effect. Then you can place coal on top of it, and the, the smoke will sometimes go through, which creates a neat effect. Also, you can light it on fire to make it look like someone's actually using it. And you might have an issue with fire spreads. However, granted with some nice functionality of tripwires slash string, you can make it not spread everywhere. So surround it, and you can have some stairs here, and make it look like it goes into a funnel somewhere. So once you have that, make it into a chimney, and it should end up right below the roof we have here. We now have a neat little forge right here, and on certain parts, I've added tripwires in an attempt to stop the fire from destroying the coal, but it was relatively unsuccessful. So, either through a lot of testing or simply just disabling fire spreads, which is definitely not survival legitimate, so you might just have to use netherrack for this. So, you can do some experimentation. If you have any ideas of how to solve this issue, then post them in the comments below. Now, what we want to do is texture the floor. So, just alternate between some nice andesite and tuff. And it would be nice to remove all the grass in the area, so that way you don't accidentally just punch out grass by using a block and create weird just mounds. So, remove all the grass, and start adding andesite, just a little bit sporadically. 
and towards the middle there should be more, and the farther away you get from the build, the less there should be, eventually ending about two or three blocks away from the house itself. With the ground textured, it's now time to add up our finishing details and a little bit of functionality here. So you're going to have to cover up a bit of the texturing you've done, and what we want to do is have little areas for our tools to cool off. Because although, yeah, most of this stuff is pretty much useless in game, we can still have a little bit of fun and make it look like it's actually useful. So, of course, having areas for your tools to lie is pretty good. Smithing table, don't forget your grindstones and anvils, and preferably a couple of cauldrons. So, the cauldron should be filled with water, and that's just a good way to cool off the searing hot metal. So, just have some various cauldrons and other useful things around. So, added in all the details, and it looks absolutely fabulous. We got the cauldrons, the anvils, which by the way, you have to place from different directions or also get a harsh line, grindstone, and just various other things that look really good. Along with that, added these little two stair things at the ends of the roof, and that looks pretty nice. And because the roof is made out of cracked, well not cracked yet, tiled deep slate, you can add cracked versions of them to give it a little bit of texture. So just a couple of neat things you can do. And don't forget a small amount of landscaping is possible. Just by placing little pieces of azalea on the corners, we can add a little bit of detail. So don't forget you can do that. And then get some wood ready and some item frames for the interior. With the final detail to the exterior, armor stands, which I completely forgot existed, it's time to go on the inside, and what we need is item frames and some trap doors. On the top, I've created support beams using dark oak trap doors, and I have a trip wire in here, and the reason why is we can bounce an anvil on it. So we can place a chain from the ceiling, and now we have a hanging anvil. Not entirely sure what that accomplishes besides, you know, a good way to just take one heart of damage randomly but it's something you can have. Now, something else, you can do a nice spiral staircase, get acacia logs and acacia slabs, acacia log down the middle, and you can have the slabs create a staircase just like this. So it might go in front of the window, which isn't necessarily the best, but sometimes sacrifices have to be made with spiral staircases. So once you reach the top, create a small landing platform, and this isn't necessarily the best, so you might want to adjust its start position, so that way the top looks kind of like this. So once you have it looking roughly like this, proceed on to the top floor, and don't forget decorations down here. So I've done basically the entire interior to spare you the noises of fire before literally disarming five seconds ago that you can actually disable fire noises. So just a basic rundown of what you can do. I have a lot of armor stands, nicely clad in full iron, a warning, don't stand under an anvil, because you know, common sense, a nice cashier desk with some displays of various iron items, you can also have diamond items, or possibly even netherite. Don't forget a good amount of lighting. And on the second floor, more item frames, some chain armor, empty armor stands, some barrels, and a bed, in case someone needs to take the long shift into making the new best iron thing. So I consider this build done, and there's really just not, there's a lot to it. So it's really not that complicated, although it it looks complicated from the outside, just a bit of studying, and a good grasp on the understanding of making a very thick frame will allow you to make a very nice blacksmith. So with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe, it really helps me out. And I noticed some of you might think you're subscribed and you keep watching my videos, but 
you might have forgotten. It's not a bug, it's just simple, you might have forgotten it if you like my videos a lot. So, double check if you actually think you're subscribed. And with that, have a nice day. Gearsaw out.